Hi cosplayers, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Cosplay Vicar, and today I want to answer a question that I've been asked a number of times, both on Instagram but on YouTube as well, uh, just around putting fans into your helmets. If you are a cosplayer and you're going to go to the cons, you are going to get hot very fast. Uh, if your character that you're doing isn't an open face character, it's very easy to overheat and almost pass out. And I've seen that happen before. Uh, I've had friends who have, uh, well, there's one guy who particularly did pass out during a troop. Uh, so fans are really important in your helmet. And there's some very expensive options out there uh, for you to actually use. But I want to give you an option for putting your fans into your helmets that, that's not going to cost you more than uh, what we would say £20, probably about $22 uh, if you're from the US. Um, there are fan makers out there that I'm not going to mention that make some fantastic kits for putting fans into your helmet. Uh, I want to give you an option that is what I would just describe as a Barry bargain, okay? Uh, because really, you only need two things. You need a fan uh, and you need a power source. Uh, and I think there are some really easy options for doing this. And I want to share this with you. Now, this is the fan that I have got in all of my helmets, be it my Death Trooper, Stormtrooper, Darth Vader, uh, all of them have got the same fans. Uh, some of them I may have cut down the size of the fan slightly uh, to fit into the helmet. So with my Darth Vader, I did some sanding on the edges just so it would fit into the helmet. Uh, but this is the fan that is in all of my helmets. And the reason I use this fan, uh, and I, I really do love this fan, is these fans don't cost more than about 10, 11, 12 pounds, depending on how much they are in the month but they come with a little on and off switch. And the on and off switch isn't just an on and off switch. Uh, it's got uh, three levels to it. So you can have it on a low level, medium level, or a high level, depending on how hot it is at the con. Now in Darth Vader, I've got two fans. I often have it on high. On my Stormtrooper, I've got two fans. I often have one on low or medium very rare that I have both of them on. Um, it's only been in very hot summer troops that I've needed both fans. Uh, and the same with my Death Trooper. Uh, there's two in there. Um, but then again, I've only ever had that on, on medium to low. So I've got a friend who is joining the garrison as a biker scout and we were talking about fans. So I said to him, look, why don't I put you a fan in for you? Um, and that made me think, why don't I share this with you guys and show you how I'm going to go about putting a fan in the Biker Scout helmet. So all you're going to need is a glue gun. Uh, I use some of this Velcro to hold the battery in place because you're going to want to be able to pull that battery in and out. Um, the fan itself, depending on the kind of helmet that you've got, will depend on where you actually put the fan. I have never put a fan in a Biker Scout before. It seems to me there's a few different options and places with the Biker Scout. One would be around the ears. You're going to draw... Um, cool air in around your ears around the helmet because that's where the, the 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 kind of hole is the gap is for that my only concern with that and if you've got fans there i'd love to hear from you my only concern would be the noise i would struggle to hear anything at a con uh, if i've got those fans on right by my ears uh, so in reality uh the only couple of spaces that you've got around the front, so it's blowing air onto your face, or maybe around the back, it's drawing air around the helmet. You don't want to have the fans in a location where the, the warm, sweaty air is just going to move around the helmet. You've basically got a bucket on your head. You don't want to just keep moving the air around. You need fresh air coming in. So the thing for me with the Biker Scout is it seems to me like the fan actually needs to go in the front. Uh, and there isn't an air hole, really, for it to draw the air through. So the only thing I think you can do with the, with the um, fan at the front is maybe to angle it. So you're going to be drawing the air in and pushing the air around the helmet. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. We're going to angle the fan so it's going to draw air up and in uh, to the helmet. Um, so... This is an absolute bargain. I would really suggest it. Uh, the thing to think about when you're fitting it is where do you put this switch? Uh, with my Stormtrooper, I've got the switches on the sides of my helmet and I can very easily reach those to turn uh, the helmet fans on and off. My Darth Vader, I can't because of the shoulder armor. I can't get my arms anywhere near my helmet. So they're actually fixed inside. So I have to take my helmet off to turn them on and off. 
Uh, that's the only way I can do it with my Darth Vader. And it's a similar story really with my Death Trooper. Uh, I can't quite get my arms to the location to be able to turn it on and off whilst I'm trooping. Uh, what I'd like to try and do with this is have it so that the switch is somewhere inside here. So as he's trooping, if he can get his hand up, he could get his thumb in underneath the helmet to turn it on and off. Um, but that may not be possible, so let's see. So, when you're fitting uh, a fan, you are thinking about a number of different issues um, depending on the helmet. Now, with this helmet, you've got this mechanism that opens up and down on the biker scout. So the cable has got to be free enough so that when the lid is up, the cable kind of runs inside and then when it's down, it'll fall uh, down the side of his face. So I'm going to have to give this a little bit of thought about how this runs through, but I'll show you uh, what my solution is uh, in a minute once I've done this. I'm just going to put some glue first. Uh, there's a little, the little connecting point where the cable comes into the fan, because it's actually a computer fan, uh, they're not that you know, great for wear and tear. So the solution is I'll put some hot glue on there and create just a solid junction point on that cable because what we don't want is for that to uh, to be damaged during a troop or the wear and tear of a troop so I'm just going to put some hot glue on that and hopefully that will just hold it in a position where it's then not going to come apart or come away now while that's drying the one thing that I am thinking about is uh, at the moment the battery I picked up this was six quid um, US six dollars, uh, six quid, and it's nice and neon green. We're not going to want it neon green. Uh, so I'm going to, once I've got this fitted and I know it's working, we may just spray that black for him or wrap it with some um, gaffer tape or something like that. But right now, the, the key thing for me is where are we going to attach it? In the back of the helmet, so it's not going to affect uh, him wearing the helmet. Now, the Biker Scout does have this beautiful curve around the back. Uh, but the issue is the battery is not curved, the battery is straight. So I'm going to want to find a location to hold that battery. And I think there is one at the back of the helmet. And uh, what this basically entails is me putting some Velcro in that we can attach, comfortably attach the, uh, the battery to. Because the helmet's curved, I'm just going to... I'm going to think about two sections of Velcro that would hold the helmet battery in place. Um, some of my helmets I've just put like a strip of Velcro, which is fine if the battery can sit flat on it. Uh, but with this, because the way the helmet curves with the bike, that just that's not going to work. So I'm going to put in some Velcro in around the curve that then... Yeah, it doesn't, because you don't really want your Velcro coming up or coming off the helmet. Let's see how that works, that's great. One of the things I'm going to do is not make this too permanent, uh, just in case he needs to move it around. And I'm not entirely sure where he wants to have this on and off switch. So I'm going to put the on and off switch attached to the helmet with Velcro. That way around, if he wants to move it later in the day and go, actually, it would be better if it was over here, then he's able to do that. You don't want to get too stuck in a corner uh, too soon. Because um, troops come and go and you realise as time goes by, actually I'd be better off if. Um, so we're going to make it so that that is exactly the case. He can move it uh, if he needs to. And I, I will presume that he is going to need to. I may make a little plan change here from where I was going to attach the battery. You know, this is the thing, once you start putting something in a helmet, you want to look at where is this going to best function. And as I've got the on-off switch on one side, I might put the battery actually on this side because it's slightly flatter around there and I can hide it.
one of the things that I have found has worked quite well. Let me just show you this. I've actually used over here, not glue, uh, but one of these little cable ties, and that's worked quite well. Now I've used that, I'm thinking I would have probably used another one of those over on this side here. So I might give him one, because um, that quite, this is a moving mechanism. Uh, so you've got to take into account that your cable is going to be moving backwards and forwards there on this particular helmet. I think that is a nice little sweet option for him. Um, you can't use them around here because his mouth is too close. His, his cheek goes right up against this, so that, that's not going to work. But that could be not, quite nice there. I think I'm going to add a few um, before I'll give it to him at the back over here where the battery is stored. Let me just show you uh, the battery stored at the back. So I'm going to swap that out, but you see the battery sits in the back of the helmet just over there. Uh, it's not the ideal colour. Um, I think I've got a, a thought for a, a better option there as well. So that may get swapped out sometime soon. So there you go, a cheap and cheerful way of putting a fan in the helmet, hiding it at the front, battery at the back, on and off switch at the side. Um, we'll look at changing that battery, but all in all, for less than 20 quid, that is a simple way of putting a fan in your battery. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be adequate for him while trooping. You may need to look at having a second one in there somewhere, but at least that gives, gives him a start uh, when he starts at his first con uh, at the end of the month. So friends, what do you use for a battery uh, in your helmet? I'd be quite interested. That pencil battery is bigger than I want. Um, I think it's bigger than the ones I've got in my helmets as well. So I might have a little look at that. Uh, there's not much space in the Biker Scout, so it really does need to be a smaller battery. So I'd love to know what you use. Uh, but friends, until next time, uh, I hope you find it inspiring that you too can put a fan in your helmet for not much more than 15 to 20 quid. Uh, I hope that inspires you to give that a go uh, rather than passing out at your next con. So friends, until next time, have a great time trooping. If you watch this video, I'd love you to like it, share it. Uh, this is a channel all about cosplay and showing ideas that makes cosplaying fun. So friends, until next time, have a great weekend.